which is described in fairy tales and myths, giant 100 meter sequoias. This is the picture our mind draws when we hear the words fairy forest. Let's think about the sequoias in California and the prism of matrix forces, otherwise our mind's protectors will melt because Devil's Tower is actually a six kilometer high tree. But realize that Devil's Tower is a young plant compared to other trees on our planet. For example, this mountain in Cape Town in Africa is really impressive. This plateau is three kilometers in diameter if we multiply 3 by 20, we will get a tree of 60 kilometers high. Do you have any clue how big its branches are? On one of the branches, you could easily place a huge residential area with all the shopping malls, schools, and parks. Just imagine how huge it is. Of course, your mind will never see that this mountain in Africa is really a tree that is 10 times higher than the Devil Tower tree, 60 kilometers higher. But guess what? That's not the limit. In the work of Russian scientist and poet Alexandra Sergeyevich Pushkin, we can read about giant fairy oaks that was on the Bayan Island near Lokomori and we now believe has been killed by our government. That oak was supposed to be the center of the earth and was some hundred kilometers high. Not sure how high, but for sure higher than the Cape Town one. This oak was the biggest plant on earth. Remember in the beginning I mentioned our prism of the mind that helps to preserve it but distorts reality? Ask any person to show you trees on the right photo and he will immediately put his finger on the green on the ground without noticing that it's only pathetic bushes. It looks more like moss in comparison to this size but definitely not a forest. Now you understand why we can't find nine dolphins, but do not dwell on fish and stumps. Once again, I urge you to think in planetary sizes. If instead of dolphins and stumps, we see lovers and mountains, imagine what is hidden from us with a curtain. That is why the apocalypse is translated as curtain opening. Do you understand now why I mentioned this matrix prism in the beginning? Through which we are looking and it turned out that we see nothing. The real world is different. I can call today's state of society a real dream. And the sad part is it is not figurative. You know, in the Russian language, the word tree is spelled D-E-R-E-V-O, D-R-E-V-O. The word ancient tree is spelled D-R-E-V-O, and the word ancient trees is spelled D-R-E-V-N-O-S-T. It means in Russian language the language of the Aryans, time, when giant old trees grew. Interesting, isn't it? Well, let's put all that in our pocket and continue our flight. I think you will ask me, and maybe it's time to ask questions. Who cut down this forest? Why did they cut it? What did they use it for? No. It is too early to ask that. We know that the whole face of the planet was covered by giant vegetation. So we can ask ourselves, where did all the other forests go? 
The thing is that this so-called Mesa are just single ones because only the best were chosen for cutting. Whole other forests of the planet were laid down by blast waves. We reviewed only stumps with flat peaks. Does anyone remember how not cut but actually broken trees look like? I will remind you. Understand my hint? Let's play the game again. Find 10 differences. I think you understood the meaning of my words. So I want you to look at the highest stumps of our planet. They were mined like a quarry and were broke by blasts. For example, the tree Everest. You can see this video on this channel, Paddywhack. It's uh, by Aaron Dover, explaining how the gold mines that they show you, like the aerial views and shit, then you go look for it, you'll see that this is all Photoshop shit. That's because it was discovered that they don't actually use nuclear power plants to make our power. They get that from a free energy type source. And, uh, they make it look like it's coming from power plants, but the power plants are the ones that are making the gold. It's just that simple. They discovered the shit in 1941. And since then, you got all these nuclear power plants out there. This, this is funny shit. You see this gold? What I see is slavery. Everybody working for worthless paper. Backed by your own stupidity. Every compass is pointing to the Holy Grail. I'm going to take over this fucking world and nobody can stop me. All I see is retarded cockroaches everywhere. Fuck you. When I look at this picture, what I see is the Saturn moon matrix. And what the problem is, is the moon is the problem. Before there was the moon, it would have been just the Saturn golden age matrix. And now there's a virus in here.
You are filthy, retarded, and necrophiliac sick. I am eternal essence in the flesh. The objective of the rule of the no wall is to generate parties. That is, self-aware organisms capable of flying into the immensity out there. Such organisms are made up by the sum of a group of warriors who have harmonized their individual intents. The purpose of that design is to perpetuate a non-human dimension of awareness. Non-human? I asked. That's it. A dimension in which personality is no longer the aim. Human beings are unable to enter and remain for any extended length of time inside the realm of cosmic awareness, a state which Don Juan called the third attention. Either we leave it and forget, or we stay and melt into the unfathomable sea. But the power that governs us has found a way to get around this limitation by creating organisms in which individual entities work as members. At the core of these organisms is radically a new kind of attention and it is generated an intent oriented towards exploring the unknown, investigating in terms of what we otherwise cannot know. Feelings of individuality are no longer their operative center because they have been substituted by something much more intense, living as part of the whole, an energy state that no ordinary man can even conceive of. There are no routines, there is no ego, there is no ignorance, there is no interpretation. That kind of organism is only one stage on the infinite path of awareness. But for us human beings, that stage is final. I asked him how the awareness of a party operates. He gave me an analogy of the physical body. Although only in a hazy way, each one of our cells is conscious of their unity and within certain limits, each one can act independently. However, their individual intent is subordinate to a superior purpose, which is to form the whole, which we call me. You're already a cyborg. You don't even, well, most people don't realize they are already a cyborg. It, that phone is an extension of yourself. There it is, boys, the fountain of youth, just like I told you. Well, that was worth the eight-year boat ride. The situation is very tense and extremely dangerous. It's only a matter of time before, uh... Oh, my God, they've opened fire. Oh, it looks like things are getting very heated here. This is not a safe place to be. And now sport. Yeah, you're right. Look, there's the Aurora Borealis. The early computer guys were creating the first network somewhere around 1974, 75. They decided to call it Ethernet after the concept of ether that was an early alchemy. We must create a super right which remains unknown. Only some may know these things and others not. You need to pinprick your finger and place a drop of your blood over the words, I intend to bring forth heaven and earth for the benefit of all. You publish a short video beside my own under Blood Over Intent on YouTube. It's very simple. There's no way to fuck this up. I am fucking Satan himself in the flesh. Get over it. I don't take money, worship, advice, sex. Ooh!